But of course, I've got to start the programme tonight uh, with what I would call uh, one of the biggest medical scandals of our time. A very long-awaited uh, report has been released today. It's been called the CAS Review. It's been conducted uh, by the paediatrician uh, Hilary Cass, Dr Hilary Cass. And long story short, it was looking at um, how young children who essentially were thinking that they were born in the wrong body, what kind of treatment have they been receiving when it comes to the NHS? Now, now let me tell you now, uh, the reports the outcome of that uh, report is damning. I do also have to say, though, it did say some of the things that many people have been saying for a very long time. It speaks to the toxicity uh, that surrounds that whole debate. It speaks to the fact that actually when you're trying to use puberty blockers to essentially stop puberty, uh, guess what, folks? The long-term harms associated with doing that were not really understood. As I say, many people have been saying this, shouting this uh, from the rooftops for a very long time. Uh, to quite a lot of personal detriment, I have to say. Well, one of those people uh, that have been shouting from the rooftops uh, about this subject joins me now. I can speak to you live. The feminist author and journalist Julie Bindle. Thank you, Julie, for your time. I've read your piece in the Daily Mail today where you respond to this uh, report at length. I found it very interesting. Uh, for anyone that hasn't seen this, um, your piece, can you just give me, what is your initial reaction to that report? Well, obviously, it's been a very long time coming. We've known about this scandal for more than 20 years. In 2003, I heard about mermaids and I also heard about uh, children being targeted by gender ideology and wrote about it then in a national newspaper. So this was over 20 years ago and I know that clinicians had been also trying to blow the whistle about practice back then. But my, my so therefore my reaction is, yes, some relief that at last the, the era of no debate and this Stalinist shutdown of, of a differing opinion uh, has come to an end. But also real sadness and anger because many, many children and their families have been harmed and not just children, but women as well. Because of course, along with this gender ideology that tells children they can change sex, guess what? They're children, they're going to be believing you, right? So apart from that, many women have had our sex-based rights threatened. We have ended up with men, with rapists in women's prisons claiming to be women. We've ended up seeing the dreams um, and hopes of, of young sports women dashed because men who claim to be women, um, you know, have taken their place and all other manner of atrocities under the name of trans rights. So it shows that the CAS report does show that there's been, <clears throat> excuse me, what's phrased as a toxic debate. But let's never forget, the toxicity is coming from one side. And this was never a debate. We were hit over the hammer with transgender ideology and it became almost impossible to speak out lest you lost your job, your livelihood, your reputation, the career, your family. Uh, when I was looking at your um, piece in the mail today, Julie, you were saying actually you don't think that there is such a thing as a trans child. Of course there isn't. There's no such thing as being trapped in the wrong body. Of course there are children that feel desperately unhappy with their bodies. Um, we understand that puberty is a nightmare to go through. All of us that are post post uh, pubescent remember that time transitioning from childhood to adulthood as very painful and uncomfortable and often uncertain. But we have understood that self-loathing and self-harm in the guise of Anorexia, for example, and other eating disorders comes along with that, um, you know, journey into puberty. And we would treat that as a mental disorder, um, as a problem, a psychological problem. We didn't take a surgeon's scalpel or, or, or ingest those girls going through those um, terrible illnesses and conditions uh, with harmful hormones. We didn't feed into their fantasy that they were a different species or, or the opposite sex. So there is no such thing as a trans child in the same way as the idea of transsexuality as it used to be um, known as only exists in the minds of extremely conservative, deeply sexist clinicians, sexologists, psychologists and the like, who believe that if you don't act as a real man or a real boy or a real girl and a real woman, you must be trapped in the wrong body. Let's fix it. That's why we see the, the highest number of sex change operations being 
formed in countries like Iran, because being gay or lesbian is so unacceptable, or being gender non-conforming is so unacceptable, that they seek to fix it by surgery and by claiming that this person is actually the opposite sex. It's crazy. Well, I've noticed I've been looking at the reaction to this. Um, and it, bizarrely, because I mean, often, you know, these kind of reports, they divide people based on where they are on the political spectrum. But actually, this report seems to have united people across the political spectrum. I couldn't help but notice I've seen quite a lot of uh, reverse ferrets happening um, on social media with people today. But I wonder, do you think anything will actually change because of this report or not? Yes. I mean, the fact that we've all been under some ideological cosh, well, not all, uh, you know, many are driving this all, and the Liberals have stayed silent for a long, long time, uh, capitulating in the most cowardly manner, watching those of us desperately trying to expose this harm to children and adult women uh, from the sidelines. But things will change, yes. It has now been exposed that children were being given harmful drugs, not based on weak evidence, but based on no evidence or based on evidence that they are harmful. It is harmful to give children puberty blockers. Cross-sex hormones are irreversible. And so the, what will change is that the cat is out of the bag. We now understand that uh, there's been something like a 5,000% increase in girls, young women presenting at gender clinics, like from... I think about 50 a few years previously, because it's a social contagion. Mm. Because they have been given the idea that a one-stop shop, quick fix um, solution to their myriad of problems that comes with being a girl and a young woman can be fixed by going down the gender clinic. And on top of that, you will get loads of attention and you will be seen as a on the block. And your school teacher will tell you to do that because... They don't have to tell their parents, they think. Loads of teachers are trans activists and they allow girls to go to school, for example, call themselves by a boy's name and demand that they're known by he, him pronouns. Yeah, indeed. It's uh, very concerning stuff. Julie Bindler, thank you very much for your reaction. Jonathan, uh, of course, you um, are a Fox <laughs> reporter too, uh, too. What's your thoughts on it? Well... I mean, just in response to what Julie just said, I mean, Julie is very lucky that she has not had gender dysphoria. I'm very lucky that I have never had it in many ways. She doesn't have a monopoly on the experience of being a woman, just as I don't have a monopoly of the experience of being a man. And there are many different people who fit into many different categories. And I think that there is a moral panic currently going on about trans rights or trans people as there was 30 years ago about gay people and the same terminology was used then about social contagion the fear of gay people in 30 years ago was that sort of gay people were secretly paedophiles and if one gay person happened to be a paedophile that somehow confirmed the prejudice in much the same way that if a trans woman actually does turn out to be a sex offender that is somehow a, you know, a representation of all trans women. I think that we have to be very, very careful and very understanding and not tar people with different brushes. I think that there but are... Do you think you can change your biological sex? So do you, do you actually agree with this notion that a little boy can essentially become a little girl? I think that there are many different ways to be uh, a man and many different ways to be a woman and that sex and gender aren't necessarily the same thing. But my it's question was, do you think you can change your biological sex? Obviously, I don't think that you can change your chromosomes, if that's what you're asking me, but I do think that trans women are women and trans men are men. So that's, that's the answer to your question. No, it's not, because when I'm asking you about biological sex, so, for example, you're Jonathan, you're a biological male, I'm assuming. Um, do you think that you can become a biological woman? And when I say biological woman, I'm not referring just... Uh, to the sense of chromosomes and all the rest of it. Albeit, I do find it quite interesting that people kind of just almost dismiss chromosomes as though they're this kind of like irritant, small issue over there. They're not. Anyone that's got uh, a child, for example, uh, that's got a ch extra chromosomes or whatever will recognise. Um, chromosomes are a huge matter. So I don't want to dismiss that issue with chromosomes. But away from that, this whole notion of biological sex. So, for example, you cannot get pregnant 
No, you in, cannot in have a way, period. In the same way that a lot of women you can't, can't get, get pregnant. cervical cancer. No, but a lot of women don't have cervixes. A lot of women can't get pregnant. But that's because of a health periods. issue. So if a woman is infertile, and I, you know, I'm very sad for that. That's you know really really sad uh, if they want to have children and they're infertile. But that's because of a health issue that's preventing that. But if you're using that as well, then what's what, what's the kind of the predeterminant then that she she would have been able to if she hadn't had a health condition in yes. much the same way that you're saying it, that trans yes. women would be would be biological women if they hadn't had um, various things happen to them. I mean, so I kind of think that the the categories dissolve pretty quickly. There are many different no, ways. No, I don't think being, they dissolve quickly. There at are many all. look. There, there are they many don't... different ways of being a man and many different ways of being a woman. And as you know, ninety nine point nine percent of people will be aligned in their chromosomes and their gender and that's and that's great for them but I'm not but I'm just saying there are and this has been this has been established for a long time Michelle 20 years ago there was almost no debate about this the people just accepted that some people were trans and we accepted them we said you you have the right to be who you are it doesn't so you know people don't necessarily have to uh, accept it or understand it um, but there was a, a kind of a sense that people were entitled to live the lives that they had freely well, chosen we